I'm going to speak to you on a subject called committed to the process. Somebody say committed to the process. You know, commitment is, is very, uh, a very rare commodity in our generation. You know, we like it fast and easy, man. Whoever invade, invented the, the microwave was a genius, and that's how we like it. You know, if it takes a minute and 50 seconds to do it, we want it in a minute. Sometimes I do pizza pockets, and I'm like, uh, hey, babe, how long is it supposed to do? It's like, it's like two minutes. I'm like, minute and a half. Eat it. I'm like, man, it's so cold. This is not good, but <laughs> the faster we can get it done, the better. And uh, I want you to go with me to the scripture for this morning. We're going to re read in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 25. And I'm going to read an NIV version and it's on your screen there. And it says, do you not know that in a race all the runners run but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. Somebody say strict training. They do it to get the crown that will not last, but we will do it to get a crown that will last forever. Somebody say last forever. Commitment to the process. We live, a, we live in a generation that we like only the beginning and the end. Come on somebody, yeah? The middle part of it is like, it's, it's tough, it's, it's the grind and it's like, oh, you know, we like the one-time event things, you know, that, oh, I'll come to the Easter service, it's going to be so good, I'm going to feel so awesome, but the Wednesday services, the Friday night prayers, the morning prayers, you know, the serving, it's kind of a hard, you know, it's a commitment process, but through that, that's where character is built, Amen. That is where your destiny begins to be developed is in through that process. I wish you can just wake up one day and just say, I got a PhD. No, you got to go through the process of four year, eight year, six year, God bless you college, amen. You know, it is, it is not easy, but that's what earns you the degree. That's what earns you that, that thing where you can, uh, you know, get a bigger pay and bigger raise, you know. For me, you know, I'm, I'm the type of guy, if I'm going to commit to something, I'm going to see it till the end until it's done. So recently my wife was like, eh, you know, my son, uh, Vince, he's in this little crib and he's a, he's a monster. He grows so fast that, you know, this time when he lays, anywhere he lays, it's just, it doesn't fit. So she's like, I found this bed on Pinterest. I want you to build it. Shows me a picture. I'm like, easy. Come on. I got this. You know, four woods, few screws. This is not, who, I got this. You know, so I go to Lowe's and I'll, babe, I got this. So she's like, uh, just buy me some white wood. I go in there, I grab the wood. I'm like, man, this is harder than I thought this would be. But nevertheless, I said I would do it. I'm committed. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to see it till the end. So I get this wood and then, you know, you have to look at the wood, make sure it's not crooked, whatever. Just find one. I'm like, that, that will do it. Um, get the bed, uh, start putting it together, and then I'm like, man, should have stayed in geography class. You know, if it's uh, 74 inches, you do 73 and a half, you know, it just messes the whole thing up. On top of that, I decided to do it at night. Why? Because I'm committed. <laughs> I can't see anything, but I'm cutting the wood. <laughs> I mark it at 74 inches, cut it at 73, like just put a screw, that will hold her, you know. At the end of the day, it looks more like Noah's Ark instead of a bed. But I am committed to the process. Amen. We built the bed. It looks wonderful. It's just turn off the lights and it looks good. <laughs> so we have to understand that part is that we as people, we don't like the process. Because the process is that's where the, the character gets built. It's the, it's the highs and it's the lows. It's not just always, oh, the church was awesome. The church was good. It's the times where I do not feel like going to church, but I know I need to go to church. It's the times where I don't feel like Jesus is with me, but his word says that he will never leave us or forsake us. That is the process being committed to Jesus. Come on, somebody. See, we have to understand that life without Jesus will be meaningless, but life without purpose will be powerless. Will be powerless. And that, but that purpose is revealed through the process. I wish one day you can come to church and the prophet says, you know, this is your destiny, this is what you're going to do. No, you have to go through tough times. Sometimes that's where your purpose gets revealed. 
David in the Bible didn't become a man after God's own heart until he lost the throne. Until some people backstabbed him. Until people to pursue him, to kill for his life. Until he went through that process, this is where he became the greatest king of Israel. A man after God's own heart. So we have to understand that part and we have to make a promise to ourselves that I am going to commit to the process that God has set for my lives. Amen, church? Number one is process builds character. Somebody say process builds character. It is sometimes very hard to understand until you experience it. It's sometimes very hard to understand what it is to be a father until you become a father. It is hard to, to understand what it is to love until you have to love and receive nothing back. It is hard to understand faith when you need to walk onto the bridge that seems not to be there. It is hard to be able to believe in healing when all the presence of sickness is evident in your body. It is hard to understand it until you need to experience it. But that is the process that we have to go through. We have to understand God is not a God of only the good times. But God is also the God of the times that when you feel like he's not there. He's the God of the valleys and he is the high, God of the high tops. Amen church. But the, you know the Bible says but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. God wants, as he ushers you into your destiny, he wants you to work on your character. We have to understand, you know, a, a skill, a gift will only last and will only be upholded by your character. So if you have absence of character, it's just a matter of time where you're, it's a matter of time where you will begin to lose the position that God has given you. You have to understand all the high places are slippery places. Sometimes God will withhold a blessing from you because he knows the blessing will only draw you away from him. You know many times people are like, I'm praying for a job. God give me a job. The job comes and you never see them in church. You never see them praying and they begin to say, I'm too busy. You know God has blessed me and I cannot make it anymore. A blessing begins to become a place where it withdrew you from God. That's why God wants you to develop a character that God says, God, you bless me or you don't bless me. My commitment to you doesn't change. God, if, if I am healed or not, you're still my healer. God, if I'm delivered or not, you're still my deliverer. Whatever my situation is, I am committed no matter what. Amen, church? That is commitment to the process. We have to understand that um, many times people begin to come to church and, and uh, you know, they give their life to Jesus and they say, now I feel peace. Now I feel love. Now, you know, things are going good for my life. But that is not the reason for our salvation of our soul. Amen. The salvation of our soul is that our, our soul is being saved from hell, from separation from God. So when God begins to bless your life, that is awesome. But sometimes when you feel God will be distant, your commitment to him should not change amen so we have to understand that our relationship with God should not be based on how I'm feeling how I am doing and how I am being treated our relationship with God should be based that he loves me no matter what he loves me whether whether I'm rich or whether I'm poor whether I'm in health or whether I'm in sickness whatever the situation might be my relationship with God doesn't change amen process produces faith we have to understand our process produces faith in us. It is hard to say, you know, uh, many times we begin to say that I believe, but belief it gets tested when the trials begin to come. Amen. When, when it's time to believe, like Bryson was saying, you know, that uh, there was time where, where he felt sick in his body. That is when faith is required. That's when you need to know that God, by your stripes, I'm healed, even though the presence of sickness may still be in my body. Sometimes when you feel all the, all the darkness around you, surrounding you, to attacking your life, that is when faith is required to know that God is on my side. The victory has been won. Doesn't matter what I feel or what I'm going through, that He is with me. Faith produces and it's shown in that process. And God wants to make us a people of faith because the Bible says only faith pleases God. Amen. You cannot have faith when everything's good. Nobody needs faith when things are good. Come on. Everybody can lift their hands and shout hallelujah when they got a pay raise. Amen. 
But it takes faith when you lose a job or you get demoted to say, God, you're still my provider, whether I'm in rich or whether I'm in lack. Amen. So God wants to produce within us a godly character. And that faith grows in times of testing and in times of trial. In Jesus' name, amen. If, it is easy, if it's easily given, then it is not treasured. If it is easily given, then it's not treasured. We have to understand that for our lives. Many times what I've seen it time after time where people are handed things down, they begin to not treasure it. They begin to not understand and they begin to not value it and they lose it. But in faith, when God begins to produce faith in you, you begin to understand what it is to love. You begin to understand what it is, peace in the midst of doubt, in the midst of confusion. You begin to understand what it is to be able to believe in God when everything else stands contrary to it. Amen, church? And another thing we have to understand is that beginner is not the owner, but the finisher. Beginner is not the owner, but the finisher. It is not how you start, but it's how you finish the race. We have to all begin to see that our commitment to Jesus Christ is for a lifetime. It's not that how we start, oh, oh, everything is good, or let me, you know, go all out. But then it's the process through it and how we finish the race. That's what begins to matter. Begin, Peter begins to come to Jesus and say, Jesus, if it's to go to the cross for you, I'll do it. I'm the rock. Come on, Jesus. You know, I'm going to do it. And then when it came time to do it, G uh, Peter was the one who was cursing and was running away naked because it was time to be committed to the process. It is time to show that it is this really what you want to do for your life. You know, many times we say, God, use me. But in order for God to use you, we have to die to ourselves. Amen. And the dying process is not easy. It's, it's a times where you have to say, say no to your own desires and says, God, it's, it's to your own will. Each one of us will have a time and a place uh, where Jesus had in the garden. Where even Jesus said, you know, God, if it is your will, let this cup pass me by. But he understood that in order to begin to, to, to save humanity, he had to be committed to the process and say, you know, not your will, not, not my will, but your will be done in my life in Jesus' name. Amen, church? God wants to use each and one of us. Maybe, you know, some of you may not be up there holding a mic, but God called you to raise children who will not astray from God. You have to be committed to the process. You know, I was having a son, and, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, so nice. You know, my wife updates you guys with a, a, a Facebook post and Instagram post. Sometimes I log in on Instagram just to see how my son is doing. And, um, you know, being a father, it's, it's so awesome. You know, you get to cuddle with them, take pictures. They talk to you. But then when the dirty diapers come, I'm like, commitment to the process. Come on. Put on the mask and let's do this. You know, it is, you know, waking up at 3 in the morning, 5 in the morning when they puke on you. And you're like, this is, this is what it is to, to be committed to what God has called you to do. You know, many of us, God has called us to reach our family. You know, when you come to your family and you begin to witness to them about God, they begin to say, you know what, you're a faker. You know, you, who, who are you preaching to? You used to do the same things that we used to do. But commitment to the process says, you know, I'll love, I'll pray, and I'll never give up until I see your life change. Amen. <laughs> commitment to the process is when you are in marriage and when things are not working out and you say, you know what, it's, it's time that I'm going to put away my old habits, my old self, and I'll be committed to the process because what God has joined together, no, no, no man shall separate. I'm going to do what God has called me to do. Amen. This is, this is not super spiritual, but it is practical. It's commitment to what God has called us to do. Amen, church. You know, God, each in, in each and one of our lives, God has placed, placed dreams and desires in the world that he put us around. It may not be the stage where you preach to millions, but could be the parents that God has placed you around. And God said, be committed to be the best son or the daughter I called you to be. Maybe God has called you to, to be the best wife, to be, to be the, uh, the honoring, to be respectful to your husband. And God has placed you in that area. And he says, you have to be the best to that. Be committed to the process and you'll see God's faithfulness in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Some practical steps I want you to let you know about, about being committed to the process is that God said, I am with you till the end. I'll never leave you and I will never forsake you. 
make a commitment to the Holy Spirit to say that I am you know through the whole through, through the through the lows or through the highs I'm not leaving you I'm not forsaking you that commitment to the Holy Spirit is that what will be able to help you last through whatever God has called you. He's the friend closer than a brother. He will guide you. He will be next to you. He will be the one to give you ideas, to give you strength and grace to do what he called you to do. Make a commitment to Holy Spirit. Maybe you'll say that, oh, it's been months have I spoken to Holy Spirit or I prayed. Get back up. Continue it. It's not, it's not, uh, you know, it's not that, you know, you do, what, you know, eight hours during one day. No, make a commitment of small steps every day. Small steps every day that will be continue in the direction, the journey that God has called you to. Uh, next step, is, next practical thing is uh, look forward to the price. Look forward to the price. There's a price for our commitment to Jesus Christ. In this life and the next some people are like, man, I'm just going to be humble. I'm just going to be poor. I'm just going to suffer, you know, in the, my, in my prizes in eternity. No, God wants to bless you here on earth too. God wants to bless you in your marriage. God wants to bless you in your health, in your finances, in your family. With every area that you're doing, look forward to the price. Because no, the commitment to Jesus Christ will bring reward in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And the last one is surround yourself with cloud of witnesses. Put yourself in a company who are striving to do what God has called you guys to do. So around yourself in a place where you'll be able to see people around you challenging you. Join a home group. Join a place where people will begin to know what is happening with you. Find a mentor that will be able to speak into your life. Not the things that you want to hear, but the things that you should change in order for you to grow. Amen. Find a place where people will begin to say that, you know, you need to cut this off. You're too lazy. You need to, you need to cut off this play, uh, these, these things, this and that. God wants you to grow. Put yourself in that position where it hurts to hear but you know it's done because you need to grow amen church God wants us to be people who are not just uh, uh, people who are running after one-time things one night stands one-time events but people of everyday commitment and consistent to the purpose that God has called them to be amen church for watching this content I hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.